Welcome to the More Than ADHD podcast, episode six. I'm your host, Ryan Mayer, certified ADHD coach, neuroinclusion advocate, and your coach on your ADHD journey. The topic for today's podcast episode is 12 healthy ways to generate dopamine when you have ADHD. As always, we want to start our podcast episode today with the question of the day. So my question for you is what is your favorite way to generate dopamine? This is a judgment-free zone, so you can say whatever you like, but comment below and then also share this because the more comments, the more shares that we get, the more people we can help. I can't wait to read what your favorite is. Mine, personally, is exercise. Have you had your water yet? Have you had your medication yet? If you haven't, here's your reminder. Let's work on self-describing. I am a Caucasian male, Standing here in my home office in tropical Cleveland, Ohio, I have brown, well-manicured hair. Speaking of well-manicured, I have about four days of stubble on my brown beard, uh, and I have a contagious smile because I'm excited to be here to talk with you about our topic today, healthy ways to get dopamine. Speaking of healthy, you need to do what it takes to be healthy, which is why I want to tell you about our sponsor, ADHD Online. Those of you who have been following my journey for a while know that one of my favorite phrases is, we are all in this together. And one of the things that our friends over at ADHD Online tell me regularly is, we are here to go through this journey with our clients. Handling and managing our ADHD is not something that we need to do alone. So I want you to know, if even if you're not working with me, I still want you to go check out ADHD Online. They've got incredible resources, including the best diagnostic tool to get an ADHD diagnosis. You can go to their website, ADHDonline.com, and at checkout, use the discount code COACHRYAN50. That's Coach Ryan 50 for $50 off. That's my $50 donation to you on your ADHD journey. Maybe the algorithm brought you here for a reason because I want you to take the next step and get that diagnosis. As a coach, I help others with ADHD to take actionable steps towards their goals. That's really what I'm all about. And what that really involves and what my mission is is to help my clients to close the gap between knowing and doing. So you may know what to do, but are you doing that? Are you taking those steps? And I really want to empower you and others with ADHD and other invisible or non-apparent disabilities. I want to empower you towards your greatness. And the vision I have for this entire thing is to change the way that the world sees those of us with invisible disabilities, especially in the workplace. Thanks so much for tuning in today because I know you could be spending your time a lot of places and I don't take it for granted. So let's jump in and give you this value you came for, which is healthy ways to get your dopamine. Before we talk about 12 healthy ways to get dopamine when you have ADHD, let's talk about why this is such a challenge for our ADHD brains. So here are some of the key reasons why those of us with ADHD struggle so much getting dopamine. I mean, our brains are literally built different. The anatomy of our brain wiring is different from our neurotypical peers. First, let's get an official definition of dopamine because some of you may be listening and thinking, I don't know what dopamine is. So dopamine is the neurotransmitter that plays a crucial role in motivation, reward, attention, and regulation of mood. Wow, a lot of those things that we probably struggle with, right? So let's talk about the other reasons why it's a struggle for ADHD brains. So I already mentioned number one is our brains are built differently. Two is, I would say like 1A, is we actually have lower levels of dopamine in our brains. So that's a huge part of the issue. Has anyone ever told you you are too much? You ever heard that phrase? A lot of us with ADHD probably have. Well, sometimes the dopamine transporters in our brain are doing too much. What do I mean by that? They're actually removing the dopamine before it has a chance to fully get into the synapses. Why do they do that? I'm not quite sure, but that's frustrating because what that basically does is it reduces the amount available, the amount that's left over to stimulate the next nerve ending. Okay, number three is the sensitivity. We hear a lot about sensitivity um, to stimulation, but this is a little bit different. This is inside of our minds. Many times I've described executive function 
uh, as the conductor for our brain, and he's sort of like asleep at the front of the symphony. Well, this, I've, I've never heard this before, but in doing some research before the episode, I found out it turns out that the dopamine receptor sites in our brain might actually be less sensitive than they should be. In other words, the dopamine's sitting right there and the receptor sites are not grabbing them. So that, you know, I'm not a medical expert, but I believe that's what some of the medications for ADHD do is help to um, wake up the receptor sites a little bit so we can get some dopamine flowing through there. So again, back to the anatomy of the ADHD brain, uh, the prefrontal cortex, this is the part that we really struggle with because that's where a lot of the decision making needs to happen and prioritization in neurotypical brains. Apparently, they have a ton of dopamine up there. We don't. That's why if you've ever feel if you've ever felt totally paralyzed by a task or even when, for example, you know, you know what you want to do. You just can't get yourself to do it like me when I was laying in bed in the middle of the afternoon when I was supposed to be recording this podcast episode. That makes no sense, logically. But physically, in my brain, like I couldn't get myself amped up enough to start the podcast episode until the urgency kicked in that the kids and my wife Andrea are coming home soon, so I must do it. And that's many times what it takes to motivate us. In addition to the prefrontal cortex, the other part of the brain that may not have as much dopamine for us with ADHD uh, as other neurotypical folks is the basal ganglia. Now, not only uh, does the prefrontal cortex do the executive functioning part, but basal ganglia is going to be doing things like impulse control. How's that going for you? Yep, struggle's real. And lastly, genetics. You know, my parents gave me a lot of really, really good things, my outgoing personality, um, yeah, my extrovertedness, my optimism about life, but they also gave me all of my physical characteristics, including my brain. Um, ADHD is about 70% genetic. So that's something for you to consider. Uh, if you have people in your family, whether it's your media family, uh, kids, parents, uh, whatever, you might want to check into getting a diagnosis. Don't forget about our friends over at ADHD Online for that. So I didn't mean to start things off in a negative, you know, um, to rain on everyone's parade, but I figured it'd be good to kind of set the scene of why we have these challenges getting dopamine. And now we can move on to our next part about, so where do we get the dopamine if we need to improve and increase it, right? Because in my opinion, understanding the reasons why we have these challenges with attention, motivation, behavior, impulse control, all of those things, if we know why it's happening, we can change the way we respond to it. So we know why we struggle with having good amounts of dopamine. Now let's talk about the not so positive ways to get dopamine. So one of the renowned experts on ADHD, Dr. Russell Barkley, um, I am always want to make sure I quote the experts. Uh, so he talks about five different areas that we really struggle with because of our ADHD, including poor self-management when it comes to time planning and goals. Area two, self-organization, problem solving, and working memory. Poor self-discipline is area three. Problem four, poor self-motivation. And five, poor self-activation, concentration, and alertness. So that was the one that I thought would be good to focus on. Easily distracted by irrelevant thoughts. Daydreaming, when should be concentrating. Start a project, can't finish it. Easily frustrated, can't persist if we don't find it interesting. Have trouble staying alert. Easily excited by activities that are going on around me. Can't seem to sustain concentration. Easily bored. Sound familiar? Me too. Now let's jump into these 12 healthy ways that you can generate dopamine if you have ADHD like I do. So the first is exercise. Now quick story time. I can tell a tangible difference on the days I exercise versus the days that I don't. Uh, and so can Andrea and sometimes my clients. So I can't say enough about the benefits of exercising. You'll get sustained dopamine release. And I would encourage you to check out, here's a link right here uh, to the book Spark uh, by John Rady and Ned Hollowell. No, I think it's just John Rady. But uh, Dr. John Rady, an expert on this, he did a lot of Harvard studies around the benefits. And there's literally nothing that can be as good for your brain for dopamine production, sustained dopamine, dopamine production, than extensive, no, 
than regular cardiovascular exercise. Not only does exercising help to create more dopamine, but it can make you more productive, more focused, and you can regulate your mood better. So not only will it make it make you healthier, but you'll also just literally be better in every aspect of life if you exercise. So do that. Tip number two is to eat a balanced diet. Now, as you've heard on some of the other episodes, none of the things that I'm going to say are going to be earth shattering, but they're going to be great reminders to you. You probably know you should be doing these things, but it's okay. If you're not, I'm just going to remind you of why they are important. Eating healthy. Your body needs the right nutrients to be able to activate in the way you want it to. So eating a diet that's rich in foods that contain tyrosine, it's an acid that can is broken down and produces dopamine. That's what we're going for. Foods like protein, chicken, turkey, fish, that's going to help in dopamine production. But you can also get this if you want if you want to stay away from the meats, that's fine. Nuts, seeds, and beans can also be great sources of tyrosine, which again can lead to increased productions of dopamine. Yes. Tip number three is going to be one that I know you probably would have guessed, getting more sleep. I'll be the first to admit this is a struggle for me. I know that sleep is important, but let me remind all of us why. When it comes down to it, adequate sleep is essential for dopamine regulation. So actually earlier this week and the last couple weeks, actually, I've really struggled with this because we've had a lot of activities going on. I was out of town for a conference. We went on vacation. I had a, we had friends coming in to visit. So I had a lot of late nights on the days that followed that. There were several days where I was having a really hard time getting myself going because I didn't get the right amount of sleep. Can you relate? So as you know, seven to nine hours of sleep is definitely the target range we're going for. We're going to do a whole nother episode on sleep, so stay tuned for that. But until we talk about that, just know you got to be getting more sleep. It's going to help your brain. Tip number four. Let's try it again. Tip number four. Practicing meditation and mindfulness. Now I know you're probably thinking the same thing I am. ADHD and meditation. Really? Well, how about one minute? How about one minute? Can you do that? Is your brain health and ADHD management, is it worth one minute? Or how about even 30 seconds? So each day at the beginning of the day and the end of my day is sort of like my book ends. I do one minute meditation. Now I go on to YouTube because if I'm not, if someone's not guiding my meditation, then I'm probably not going to meditate or have a mindfulness moment. But you know what? I'm feeling impulsive and spontaneous. I'm going to give you a mindful moment right now. Okay, let's do like 30 seconds. Here we go. Breathe in with me. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Now keep that going. And I just want you to notice the breath coming in. Notice the breath going out. See how it feels in your body. Because when you do this, when we pay attention to our bodies, we're not going to be as hyperactive internally or externally. Okay, a couple more. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more. Breathe in. Breathe out. If you like that, comment below. I'd be happy to do a whole nother episode on meditation or maybe put out some ADHD-friendly meditations. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. Regularly doing these things, being more mindful, it's going to help you to regulate your emotions. It's going to relax you. It's going to make you less volatile. I feel more relaxed just after a few breaths there. What about you? One of my goals here on the podcast is to help you to reduce stress. And by doing this breath work, taking this one minute of mindfulness, you can help to reduce your stress as well. I hope it's helping. Tip number five, set achievable goals. I know that on a past episode, we talked about the importance of goal setting and how to stop missing the mark. But today I want to focus on how that's going to lead to dopamine. I, as my wife, Andrea likes to say, you've got to move to improve. Let's actually put that up as a quote. Move, you got to move to improve. Hashtag move to improve. Accomplishing small tasks can really help in boosting dopamine. I always say it's about movement brings momentum. So 
accomplishing some small tasks first can get you excited. Right before I did this episode, I needed to gain up some energy. So I sent out a couple video messages to people, 17 to be exact, and I felt like I could conquer the world after that. So I was ready to jump in and start recording. What can you do to build some momentum? Again, feel free to comment below if it's going to help you to stay accountable. Um, But let's build some momentum. Setting and achieving those small goals is a huge step in generating more dopamine. Did you know that you don't have to do this journey alone? No, you don't. With the Ryan Mayer Coaching Digital Community, you can join for free and connect with people all around the world that are going through the same things that you are. You can join for free. There's a link below in the show notes. Uh, You can also uh, comment on the video and say you want to join the community. We can get you connected. And in the community in this month, uh, we are doing a monthly challenge of doodling. So like get your thoughts out by doodling. I love doing that. So I knew it'd be fun for me. Um, And here's the one that I happened to do today. I was saying thank you uh, to some of the people that I was working with. So I just want to say thank you for listening. Uh, And I want to know what is it that brings you joy? What are some hobbies? Because that's tip number six. Tip number six is engaging in enjoyable activities. So for you, maybe it's not doodling. Maybe it's playing an instrument, painting, going on walks, doing hikes in nature. Maybe it's gardening or reading. Whatever the thing is, it's going to generate dopamine. You can even use that as an incentive to get you through some of the more mundane tasks because it'll give you a sense of pleasure and accomplishment. So that is tip number six. All of the tips that we're providing in today's episode are really to help you to live your best life. And that's what our friends over at ADHD Online want to do as well. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking, man, this really resonates with me, maybe I have ADHD, I would invite you to go to ADHDonline.com, take their online assessment, and you can get a diagnosis in just a matter of weeks. It's ADHDonline.com and enter code COACHRYAN50, COACHRYAN50 at checkout for $50 off. That's my donation to you, $50, because I want you to take this step. Now back to the show. Before we go on to number seven, we'd love to have you comment below. What are some of your favorite hobbies and what's the next one you're going to do after this episode? Tip number seven is maintaining social connections. When's the last time you texted your friend? Come on, seriously, you know you had that one unread text message. I think I currently have 46 unread. Judgment free zone, but text the people back. Let them know, hey, I haven't forgotten about you. I'm still here. I know with ADHD, it can be some sometimes be hard, but engaging in social activities, getting into groups, reconnecting with old friends and family, this can generate dopamine. That's why it's tip number seven engage in social activity. If you're on your phone and you've been scrolling for a long time, why don't you take a pause and go? connect with someone who you haven't talked to in a while. Again, I want this to be interactive. So would love to have you comment below and say, after this episode, I'm going to reach out to fill in the blank. I love tip number eight. It's listening to music. Nothing gets your emotions flowing like music. What are some some of your favorite songs that you haven't listened to in a while? Maybe try throwing that on, listening to it after this video or this podcast episode and Get back to that happy place by generating some dopamine through music. Tip number nine for healthy ways to generate dopamine is practicing gratitude. You can pause this right now. I want you to think about one thing you're grateful for. Just one. I always start, there's a reason why I always start my coaching calls in this way is to remind my clients, hey, things aren't as bad as you might think that they are. And again, I want to encourage participation here. So feel free while you're listening to me talk. If you're watching this on watching this on YouTube, please comment below and say, what are some things you're grateful for? Would love to hear from you. We were just talking about this earlier this week on Folding with Friends. So if you're following me on social media, we go live every Tuesday night, 8.45 p.m. Eastern, and we do Folding with Friends. And we are talking about the topic of uh, overcoming negative self-talk. And we did that with positivity. And so you can create something known as a smile file or a feel-good folder of all the things that bring you joy. Andrea read down a page of things like hiking, sunshine, time with the kids, time uh, date nights with Ryan, eating on a patio, going on cruises, tropical vacations, laying on the beach. Again, the list is endless, but it's going to be very personalized to you. So anytime you need to get some dopamine flowing, you can be listening to relaxing music and pretending you're laying on a beach. 
or schedule a vacation to go on a beach, right? Number 10 is trying novel experiences. Engaging in new and exciting activities can generate dopamine. No surprise there. Try new foods, meet new people, play new games, read new books, whatever it is, however it looks to you. You know our brains thrive on novelty. So try that as a healthy way to generate dopamine. For those of you who are part of our RMC digital community, you know that I'm sending out Ryan reminders. Stay hydrated. Um, so if you haven't taken a drink of water today, please do that. Your brain needs that. In fact, that's tip number 11. Stay hydrated. Because for our brain to properly function, it needs water. There's a reason why our brain is mo why our bodies are made up of 68% water. It's because we need water to function. Cognitive performance will be improved. Overall brain function will improve if you drink more water. Tip number 12 is considering supplements or medication and or medication, I should say. I, I personally use both and they both help me. Some of the ones that I'd recommend though, in general, the categories would include omega-3 fatty acids, which I tend to get in the supplement form through fish oil supplement, vitamin D, and also probiotics. So you can get supplements for all of those things, uh, but there's plenty of others through my Amazon storefront that you can see that I use that I really enjoy, but you choose what's best for you. However, consult with your healthcare professional before trying any new supplements as Coach Ryan is not a healthcare professional. So there you go, everybody. That is your roundup of the 12 tips for healthy ways to generate dopamine when you have ADHD. Oh, wait, what's that? Oh, I'm getting... Oh, we're going to give you a bonus. Okay, let's go. Here comes bonus number 13, tip 13 for healthy ways to generate dopamine when you have ADHD. And that is limiting screen time. I've had a lot of clients who have struggled with things like screen addiction. It could be social media or doom scrolling. It could be video games, which is a really tough one. Uh, even things like pornography. The struggle is real. Set time limits, get accountability partners, do whatever you have to do to limit the time you're looking at a screen. Humans aren't made to just stare at screens all day as Ryan talks to people through YouTube. <laughs> That's the show, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. And again, don't forget to go see our partners over at ADHDonline.com. I've been so overjoyed to have over 50 people in just the last couple of months who have been listening to the podcast have redeemed my $50 discount coupon code, and we're helping to change lives. I'm just so excited. So again, you can go to ADHD Online. We're all here to help you on your journey. Um, and it's ADHD Online, and at uh, checkout, you use discount code COACHRYAN50 for $50 off your assessment. I'm so grateful that you stopped by. If you're not already subscribed, why not? Uh, but no, we'd love to have you subscribe to follow us here and on all the social media platforms. Remember, you're not alone in this. You're not broken. ADHD doesn't define you. You are so much more than ADHD. ADHD is just a part of you or your invisible disability, whatever that might be, is just part of you. So please don't let your performance in your job or at home uh, dictate your self-worth because you are amazing just the way you are. But if we can help you to get better, that's why we're here. So consider joining the community. If you want to learn more, you can schedule a call with me and my team. But as always, I believe in you. I love you. And we'll see you next time.